Very good morning, Your Excellency Marcin Sedax, Under Secretary of State for Security, the Americas, Asia and Eastern Policy of Foreign Affairs of Republic of Poland. Your Excellency Ambassador Beata Sosinska, distinguished speakers, ladies and gentlemen, a very pleasant morning to all. It is an honor to welcome you all to the webinar on Polish-Indonesia relations in foreign and economic strategies. And it is great to see you again, Mr. Spidax, and allow me to also warmly greet the audience participating both from Indonesia and Poland. Let me begin by congratulating our host today, Ambassador Stosinska and her team for the excellent organization of webinar and as part of series of events to commemorate the 65th anniversary of our bilateral relations. Despite the fact that this pandemic has prevented us to commemorate our bilateral anniversary in normal fashion, nevertheless, this is also meaningful to celebrate this momentous event. I'm encouraged to note many activities both of us have planned to commemorate our bilateral relations, although some of them might need to be rearranged and revisited in terms of the forms are mostly taking place. This event, therefore, provides us with excellent opportunity to reaffirm our strong commitment to boost further our cooperation, particularly on economy for our mutual benefits. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, as every country is still focusing their efforts to address the pandemic, including embracing the impacts of their respective following waves, I also have learned that many of us have been starting our efforts to recover our economies. This is very difficult for all countries in the world because we know the pandemic do kill people, but at the same time, we also know the excessive lockdowns do kill livelihood. This unprecedented pandemic, of course, have created severe negative impacts to our livelihood and well-being. I have noted with great expectation on the commitment of the international community to strengthen cooperation, including the progress achieved so far on the production of safe and affordable vaccines. Undeniably, the situation has severely affecting the economic well-being of our peoples and disrupted badly the global supply chain. The longer the situation remains not under control, the worse the economic impacts will affect the whole world. Thus, international cooperation, very crucial in order to collectively put the situation under control. I have identified many, many initiatives and collaborative activities undertaken, including in our part of the world, ASEAN. Despite difficulties of organizing physical events, we have intended, we have invented many creative ideas and still conducting meetings and activities such as this by using digital technology platforms. Thus, addressing the pandemic should remain our main focus for the time being, but recovering our economies should also be placed as the other priorities. And we should not contradict one with the other because it's no long only create confusion for the people, but 
it would not address the problem at all. So therefore, let us use this event to address both and identify where we could collaborate by using the important momentum. Indonesia is now bracing for slightly minus 0.3% contraction of economic growth in 2020. However, we are confident that next year, the economy would be back on track with 6% or above economic growth. As many countries are currently facing the second wave of infection and restart imposing another restriction, we are hoping that economically we could immediately identify how we are maintaining our trade and investment activities. In Indonesia, we are in a period of transition from what used to be called as more severe restriction of collective gathering toward a new normal because we learn the hard way. And we also take note the WHO messages that for developing countries, lockdowns do not solve any problem and in fact create more miseries and new problems. So for us, it is not an option. It is more the opportunity for us to live in the new normal while we have continued focusing and prioritizing addressing the pandemic. This could only be effectively addressed through international collaboration involving many countries and stakeholders by utilizing all international mechanisms available. This concerted effort will not only require innovation and solidarity, but also our utmost restraint in, impl in implementing trade restriction. To identify how we could collaborate at the bilateral level, I would like to recommend the following. Let us exchange notes on how we could complement each other in addressing the pandemic through the provision of making available essential medical equipment, medication in the short and medium term. We should join hand at the global level on how we could ensure that the vaccine development and usage involving as many as possible. We are also developing our own vaccine while sourcing from bilateral and multilateral frameworks. We have started implementing travel corridor arrangement with some countries in the region, as well as from outside the region and within ASEAN member states. We are also promoting the essential business travel to be taken place as soon as possible while not endangering the safety of the travelers and the public. We have received important visits and making international travel at the ministerial level to expedite cooperation on many areas so as to enable us to effectively contribute in making the situation under control and starting our economic recovery efforts. On tourism, we have also promoted the domestic traveling to ensure that people would start traveling and enjoy their tourism activities while at the same time maintaining very strict health protocol and restrictions that would be implemented in great discipline. 
We are also inviting investors from many countries to start identifying possibilities of using Indonesia and ASEAN as their production base in our common efforts to strengthen global value chain. We would also welcome those from Poland to invest in using Indonesia as their base. To improve ease of doing business, we have enacted the new legislative job creation law, which has been applauded by many countries and business organizations. The law basically has revised almost 80 other laws that have been indicated as created restraints and hurdles to doing business and investment in Indonesia. Let me also underline the importance for us to collaborate in utilizing the potential of Poland as also production base of our industries in Europe. Our cooperation will certainly contribute in our common efforts to address the pandemic and to help recovering our economies for our mutual benefits. Let us utilize the momentum of our 65th anniversary of diplomatic relations to strengthen cooperation in addressing the pandemic and recovering our economies and beyond. It is essential if we could capitalize our strong partnership in the past 65 years for the benefits of our peoples. Let us also strengthen our efforts to increase the awareness and interactions among our businesses through various activities such as this one. Our two countries have been enjoying a strong and mutually beneficial relationship in various sectors, most notably economic, education, fisheries and marine, as well as energy. I believe we can do more to make them or to expand more robustly. We have also worked hard to intensify our efforts to increase people-to-people -people contact be that through student exchanges, academia, and universities, joint research, or vocational training programs. We can also do more. Frequent engagement of our high-ranking officials should also take place more often. Our record shows that our bilateral trade volume reached $708 million in 2019, an increase of 10.7% compared to the previous year. This is, of course, still very low compared to the actual potentials that we need to unlock. Polish investment in Indonesia reached 0.7 million to finance 24 projects. This is down compared to 20 million in 2018. And again, still very low compared to the actual potentials. I note several potential sectors that Indonesia and Poland should explore. The stay-home economy, digital economy, medical care, fintech, and telemedicine. Another area of collaboration that we can explore are greener and eco-friendly products, such as development or renewable energy sources and electromobility. But I wish to remind us here not to use this issue to place restriction to trade, as unfortunately we have seen its growing trend. Other areas of interest of cooperation are also important, including maritime, legal matters, and higher education. As I mentioned earlier, tourism may not restart soon internationally, but we have to prepare ourselves to recovery on this sector. Let me suggest if all we have discussed could be elaborated further through regular meetings in the form of bilateral joint commission, for instance. Ladies and gentlemen, I cannot stress enough 
how valuable and important the discussions we are about to have. I encourage you to utilize the webinar today. And this is the appropriate venue for us to innovate new prospects and opportunities. Together, we can create a better, brighter, and more promising future for Polish-Indonesia relations. To conclude, I would like to once again congratulate and thank Ambassador Sosinska and her team for providing us this amazing opportunity. And would like to thank the speakers today for giving their valuable insights and time on our topic today. I wish you all a fruitful webinar. Thank you.